Hey guys, a little bit of a different video here, but just letting you guys know, if any of you Canadians up here are looking to get a drone and you know about the whole drone regulations, Canadian government, blah, 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 exam stuff, letting you know it's not as difficult as people say it is. I suck at exams. I always get really nervous. I get really anxious. First off, the exam is open book. Yes, it's gonna ask you some absolutely peculiar garbage about random stuff that you don't really need to know as a drone pilot. However, there is this magical, wonderful, wonderful tool called Google. But I definitely, definitely wanna give credit where credit is due. There's a guy called Dom Joyce. He made a video basically going through the entire exam, kind of what you need to study, what you need to look up, the documents you need to have open during it. This guy made this video about what almost a year ago. This one saved my bacon. Basically what I did is I watched his video a couple of times. I did notes. But every part that he talks about in his little video, I would stop, go through all the information, kind of copy it into a Google Doc sheet, as well as look up a few things that he talks about, like parts of a plane, all these different little things. Just have as many notes as you can in one document, as well as having the Canadian Aviation Regulations uh, page up, the AIM page up, and a few other ones. He actually lists all of the documents that you need to have or should have on hand. If you wanna try and actually study for this and go for the advanced, you can do that. I might do that down the road, but I might more so take a course for that because that one you gotta do in person, and that would really put me on the spot. So right now, if you're just going for the basic one, his video is definitely the best. But going back to Google, there is a lot of questions that you could actually just copy and paste the answer into Google. Does not work all the time and you will not get the perfect answer. There's a few things you're gonna have to Google. The one time they were talking to me about the different types of headwind, all of my notes didn't have anything specific about that. So I actually had to look up what it was. There are some questions, however, that will make no goddamn sense. For all of us who had to go through the Canadian L driver's license exam, you will understand when I say weird ass broken English, you will see the question, you yourself will know what the answer is. You will go and look up the terminology in the CAR and you will see the answer there. And then you'll look at the four options that they give you and none of them are the ones that you wanted. None of them are the ones that are the actual answer. So you're gonna have to go through a little bit of that. You're really gonna have to read the question over and kind of go over some of them. And you're just gonna have to look over the answers a couple of times, kind of see what your options are and try to stay as close to the book, any of the documents that you need to look up as best as you can. However, there will be some times where you're gonna get an answer wrong. There was one question in particular about de-icing in the book and all the rules, it says you cannot fly your drone when it's icing. You can't fly your RPA when there is any form of frost around. Do you think that any of those were the answer? None of them were. None of them said you shouldn't fly. One of them was you shouldn't care. One of them was uh, you should let people know. One of them was you could do it with a special SFOC regulation class setting. And the other was you just put de-icing fluid on it. What was the right answer there? None of them were. Went with the one that I thought was the most logical, but I got that one wrong. In the end, I got 75%. All you need is 65%. So you need to get 22 questions right of 35. There'll be a couple of times where you're gonna be like, mm, a little bit out, but I actually fully knew I got a lot more right than I did wrong when I already was going through it. Like sometimes you kind of have that mind space of, I think I'm right. There's a lot of times where you will be able to find the information and be like, yeah, I'm right. Either way, it's not as difficult as you would think it is, just you gotta be quick with going back and forth through your documents, control F, looking up words that are kind of similar to it. Like you're not gonna look up the exact word, you're gonna kind of look up like sensor or a frame or look like that, like ch -ch 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 check through it all. I had about 17, 15 minutes left on the clock, so I had time to go over my answers. In my experience, I never go over my answers. I find that whatever my first answer was is usually the one that I'm gonna sit with if I go back and change it. I'm gonna get it wrong. But anyways, it was really fun to try and fly this out. I tried to do a Casey Neistat shot. Fortunately, it did not work out as well as I thought it would. I've gotta figure out how to do this, but I can't wait to keep flying this thing. I can't wait to keep trying it. Just make sure obviously you're flying within the areas that you can do it. But again, look up Don Joyce's video. You want the best video to know what to do. This guy has it. It is the best video. Thanks again to Don for doing this. And good luck to you guys, and hopefully we all see you in the air soon, because I'm just waiting until Canada makes it even harder. Because apparently right now, they've pretty much made it near on impossible for a tourist to come and use their drone here, legally.
if I'm correct. It's just stupid. But at the same time, seeing how many assholes are flying their drone over YVR when the drones were all like the big rave, I can understand because that would piss me off. So I guess they're just kind of being like overly cautious, like how we shut down the border before the Americans said, hey, all right, see you guys later.